Hi everyone, I'm Jane and I work at the London Fire Brigade Museum and welcome to our history all about the Fire Brigade during the Second World War. The Second World War was from 1939 until 1945 and the fire service played an important role. This is because war came to the home front when cities, including London, were attacked from the air by German bombers. This was known as the Blitz. The word Blitz comes from the German word Blitzkrieg, which means lightning war. The bombs that were dropped destroyed homes and caused lots of fires. From the 7th of September 1940 until May 1941, thousands of bombs were dropped on Britain, and this was often done at night. Why do you think this happened at night? The darkness made it harder to see the enemy aeroplanes, making it easier for them to drop their bombs without being seen. This is why we had the blackout. The government said that people had to cover their windows with thick curtains, turn off street lights, and fit special headlamps to their cars to make sure the lights pointed to the ground. This made it difficult for enemy bombers to see where to target dropping bombs. What did the fire brigade do? The bombs that were dropped caused huge fires and the fire brigade were there to put them out quickly. With lots of fires, the fire brigade needed lots of extra firefighters and fire engines to help. People from all different jobs wanted to volunteer and thousands joined the fire brigade all across the country. For the first time during the Second World War, women could also join the fire brigade. Their jobs included driving canteen vans, relaying messages on motorcycles, and even moving petrol lorries to fill up all the fire engines with fuel. They also had roles in communications, answering emergency calls and directing fire engines to the right place. To join the fire brigade, people had to be 17 years old. However, boys who were as young as 16 could become messengers. They had to pass messages between fire stations, often just using a bike. This could be very dangerous, but many joined for the adventure. With lots of extra firefighters, they needed uniforms to wear to protect them. They had steel helmets, which is a type of metal. This was painted grey or dark green to help camouflage firefighters from enemy bombers. They were made from metal so that they were strong enough to protect firefighters from falling bricks and rubble. The fire engines that were used during the war were not red like they are now, they were grey. Why do you think fire engines were grey? This was because red could be easily spotted from the air by the enemy bombers, but grey is the same colour as the street, and so camouflaged the fire engines and kept them hidden. Some of the new fire engines were easy to use, could pump plenty of water and they were small. This made them cheaper to make as we needed lots of them. Because they were so small, they needed to be pulled to the fire. The fire brigade used taxis to tow them. To put out the fire, firefighters needed lots of water. Now we would use water from underground water pipes, but during the blitz they couldn't do that as many had been destroyed by bombs. Firefighters had to get water from elsewhere. Where could they get water from? Firefighters used special fire engines that carried extra large water tanks. They filled holes in the road with water. These looked a bit like swimming pools. They even pumped water from the River Thames. With more firefighters and more fire engines, we needed more fire stations. In 1939, children were evacuated to the countryside so that they were away from the dangers of dropping bombs in the cities. So lots of schools were empty. Why were schools used as fire stations? Schools were perfect for fire stations because they had playgrounds to park fire engines, school halls for firefighters to eat their meals, and classrooms for firefighters to sleep in. Some firefighters even had small farms at their fire stations to help with rationing. What was rationing? In January 1940, the government rationed food so that everyone received a fair amount. This is because there was less food to go around, as Britain is an island and lots of our food comes from other countries. The ships bringing in this food were often attacked 
and food would not arrive. Things like eggs, meat and cheese were rationed. Fruit and vegetables were not, however they were often in short supply. Chocolate and sweets were rationed during the summer of 1942. It wasn't until February 1953, over 10 years later, that they were widely available again. To help with rationing, firefighters often kept a few pigs and rabbits to add to their meat supplies. One fire station even had ducks and a turkey or two. Vegetables were grown in small gardens on most fire stations, if there was enough space. The produce from these small farms and allotments added to the firefighters' diet throughout the war and for many years after. When did the war end? The Blitz ended in May 1941, however bombs continued to be dropped up until the end of the war in 1945. Once peace was declared on the 8th of May 1945, this was called VE Day, which means victory in Europe. We still celebrate this important day, remembering the great sacrifice made by everyone during the war. And here at LFB, we honour the memory of our firefighters, who Winston Churchill called a grand lot, and their work must never be forgotten. Thank you for watching our video all about the Fire Brigade during the Second World War, and we hope that you enjoyed it. We have two activities that you can do. Firstly, why don't you download our worksheet, which has lots of activities all about the things you would have learned today. Secondly, why don't you have a go at drawing your own blitz scene? It could be of the streets of London with grey fire engines and firefighters wearing steel helmets. Or it could be of a school being used as a fire station with its very own farm. Once you've done your drawing, don't forget to ask an adult to upload it so that we can see what you've done using the hashtag LFB Second World War.